Hello. This episode is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. And thanks to you patrons, we voted for Mansion of Madness 2nd Edition to be the game I'm going to review this time. So thanks a lot to you and uh, you guys watching. I hope you like this episode and uh, yeah, I don't mind. If you don't mind, please check out my Patreon account at patreon.com slash to see how you can support me and influence which games I'm going to review in the future. Hello, welcome to Takras Reviews. Yeah, I know, it's a lot. A lot of things in front of me. And okay, this is just one game. And the game is called Mansions of Madness, second edition. So of course I'm gonna talk about the second edition, but I will also talk about the first edition and the differences. The major difference in uh, this edition and the first one is there is no keeper. In the first one you had one player who has to play the keeper, who controls the minions, the monsters and all the events that happens. But now that player is no longer needed. He is playing as one of the detectives. And the story is the same. You have a slight uh, clue to go on, like you, you spoke with a phone <laughs> with a guy on the phone and he, he was in horror and you know this guy so you bring along your friends and you're gonna visit him in his mansion and uh, when you come there you find out okay things are not as they should be but what is the matter and how can you stop it and how can you fix it and how can you win the game you have no idea in this game so the premise is the same you have detectives going in clueless of what's going on they have to find clues and discover what is going on and solve the mystery so you see, this map here is well represented on the iPad as well. So it, this is kind of a hybrid between an app and a uh, tabletop game. But is that a good thing? So this game is heavily, heavily, heavily dependent on you having an app with Mansions of Madness Second Edition. So this helper app, it has, I don't know, at least 60 or 70% of the contents of the game. <laughs> the rest is just the figures that you have on the map to represent yourselves. So, for instance, here on the, the iPad, you see the map entirely, and some, some uh, markers are visible here as well. But, no figures are on the app. All the figures, like the detectives, are on the map here, on the table, physically. And you have tokens, which are not on the app, and uh, yeah, the die, and some cards, which is not on the app. And you could have monsters, and that won't be on the app, but if you click here, you will see that you can click on the monster there as well and interact with it, like attacking it or evading it if you want to escape from it. But that's the extent of uh, the visual representation for, of the uh, figures in the app. It's just, yeah, they don't really care where this is as long as you follow the rules. And the rules are very simple. But if, again, the app is controlling a lot of the game now and you almost don't need to learn the game, it's so easy now. So now I've chosen the two characters I want to play. I find the figures and I check them in, in the app. So now the app asked me to find some starting items. And I found those four starting items and a spell. Now the spells are the same as in first edition. You have a lot of uh, spells, the same card. So shriveling, I have five cards here with shriveling, but the, all the backs are different. So you shuffle these and choose one at random and you're not allowed to look at the back of the card until you are instructed to do so. So sometimes it might be a good effect or a bad effect depending on the situation and depending on the outcome of the test you're doing. So now I have these five things I need to uh, divide among my two investigators. And once I'm done with that, I just continue uh, setup. But before that, you see at the bottom, each investigator begins with one clue each. And clue is very important. If you played the first edition of the Magic of Madness, you know one thing. The setup is a long, long and painful process. And I'm almost done already in this video. It's so fast. Just separate the cards, choose uh, investigators and follow the app. So, right now I have no map of course. So, I'm gonna click continue here. And uh, we'll get a quote from H.P. Lovecraft uh, writings. And then begin scenario. And then we have a narration by... Uh, by the app, which is very good in my opinion. Just listen to it. The herd animals that should be placid stampede themselves into a bloody mess or vanish without warning. Unseasonable lightning storms. So I have not played this scenario at all because this is totally new for me yesterday on the app. And I love that place with uh, just having an app update to add scenarios. That is a good thing, uh, I think. So. Of course, I own, I had to purchase these expansions physically to get the app update because 
otherwise it wouldn't work. So now the app tells me to find tiles or a tile. And you see, I have a lot of tiles to go through in this example, quite a few, but they're not the only one. I also have these tiles, a bit different format, but I have more of those, and some bigger ones even, but only three, luckily. So the app tells me now to find one of these squared ones, and I won't bore you now with looking for it, I'm just gonna find it. So I'm gonna find a dungeon cell, and there we have it. So I'm just put it on there. And I'm going to put some darkness markers in the area. Now, after I place these darkness markers, they will disappear from the app because if I remove these for some reason, the app doesn't care really. It's just I have to remember the rules that they will give into the game. So I place it like this and continue. So now I get some uh, narration about what's going on and I place the figures on the designated area. Now see, the figures doesn't necessarily match the figures you have selected, and if you have more players, you still only see two figures here, and not necessarily those you've chosen, so keep that in mind. You just ignore that effect. So, a small sound alerts to another person locked in a cell with you. When you focus, you see a man slumped against the far wall, cradling an arm close to his chest. He murmurs to you. Not dead yet, eh? Place a person token as indicated. This is Zebulon Waitley. These markers are used for exploration. So right now we're locked in a cell, and uh, well, there's not much to do there, is there? But they will be used a lot for all the closed doors and all the closed things you want to explore. So these are very handy to, to know the difference between what you can uh, interact with and what you can explore to. And these tokens, the question marks, are used to bring attention to areas such as now a faint purple glow draws attention to the table just outside the cell. And place a search token there. And of course, we have another exploration token, place it as indicated. And then I'll see that uh, there's a scrap of wood and metal in the stack here, so I just need to find a marker to, 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 for this uh, purpose. So I could use a bookcase to place here because it has a barricade, and this bookcase is a barricade marker, so I could use that. Or I could just find the correct token as required. Now let's see. So, the man across from you seems to come to a decision, presenting you with his hand. Zebulon Watley, for what it may be worth, the way I see it, if any of us is to survive tonight, then that caught us need to be stopped. I got a plan for that if you want to hear it. Hmm, I want to escape of course, so yeah, sure. Oh, come on, the app crashed. No. Well, the app crashed. That hasn't happened before, and uh, let's see, we just have to just start over and uh, probably get some new star items, but yeah, let's see what happens now. So now the app is going into the investigator phase, so now it's up to us to do something. And we have actions we can do, and the app has no clue what they're doing unless we tell it what we're doing. It doesn't know where we are, it doesn't know if we swapped cards or anything, so they just expect us to follow the rules, and to have fun of course. Uh, so I'm going to just zoom in here and ignore one of some of these effects just to tell you what you can do in the game. So you see here the brown border here, they indicate uh, impassable terrain. So you cannot go through here, you have to go through the door, which after this token is removed, you can go through here. But uh, on your turn as an investigator, each investigator gets two actions. And the actions are very simple. So let's say I'm standing here. I can use an action to uh, check this out and see what happens. I can use an action to explore here. I can use an action to get two move spaces. So I can move one, two, for instance. You see here, there's a small white line here. It indicates that this is a space and this is a space. So these two now, they do not share space. Because another action is to share items with each other, or trade items. So I can give the bandages from her to her. But to do that, they have to be on the same space and have to use an action to do that. Also an action is to use these cards here. It says action. That's an action to do. Or maybe if you have some uh, special abilities on your character, it would say action here. So those are the things you can do. You can also interact with uh, characters or uh, other things that happens on the map, like this one. Uh, but it's very, very simple to get into. So on my turn, I have options now. Right now I only have two options, actually. Uh, I can talk with uh, Zebulon here. And you see, he says he has a plan to stop the cult. Now, I can choose, what is your plan? And the arrow next to it indicates that this will cost me one of my actions. I cannot go back on this afterwards. So if I click that one, I lost one action. We're gonna leave him alone. 
the other thing you can do is to check the door. So when you approach the cell bars, you can teach, uh, tell the padlock is antiquated and you might be able to disable it. Now I have chosen two investigators with little strength, so I'm not going to smash the lock. But I might try to pick the lock and I suspect we'll get a puzzle now, so pick the lock. And the padlock chills your palm as the work of the interior mechanisms. Tap to attempt the puzzle using observation. So luckily for me, the agent I chose, the investigator I chose to, for this purpose, has five in, in observation. So I have five steps to do this now. And the object of this puzzle is to get the gray uh, box here into the right area. So I have to move these pieces um, using five steps or less. If I don't manage to do that, uh, I have to close it, but the game will save the state of the lock so I can continue later. So the app has no idea how many actions you have or how many moves you have, because that's up to you. But it does have on the bottom there uh, the total amount you use so far. This is just one of the puzzles in the game, and they are quite interesting. This is a more basic one. So how I'm gonna use this one here. I can move this one to the right, this one down. So we'll see, one, two, three, four, five. Hooray, I open the door and I just remove the marker as instructed and I may move one step in. And of course I want to do that because I will save me from actually doing an action to get into the room. Okay, so now I'm gonna check. I still have one action left with this uh, investigator. I have to finish uh, this investigator now before I can go back. Uh, and I wanna check what is on the table here. So the table is stained and sharp metal implements have been left arranged around a small object glowing faintly in the dark. Oh, so as I approach the glow, Zebulon here is moving out as well and is standing right behind me. What you see now is very typical to this game. Uh, there's a lot of storytelling and uh, narration. So right now he's uh, just suddenly started to talking to you. So when you open the door, you just don't open it. No, you you will explain the sounds you hear, what you observe, and other things. So everything you do here was very well told, and nothing is just open, open, close, shoot. No, everything is narrated. So I love this about this game. So now I have to do a test, and these are very often. And you don't know what kind of test it is until you try it, and then you can get the best uh, investigator. So right now I have Mandy Thompson doing the test, and she has a three. So that gives me three dice to roll to complete the test. And I want a high number, of course. So I'm gonna roll this, and I want this symbol here, this pentagram symbol too. For each of those is one success. So I got one pentagram and two clue tokens, or clue symbols. So I have one clue token, which I started with, and can use one of these to change one uh, symbol into one success. And I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get two successes now, so confirm. Success. So I find something. So I have to find this in this deck here. You see it indicated in the lower right of the picture here. Just the item that I needed. And here it is, forensic evidence. And she gains that item and we discard the search token. Okay, suddenly now I have met a figure. Well, then I just find the correct figure here among my figures. So what I have done here is of course to paint them all, duh. <laughs> uh, but also I have glued them on this strange basis which they are on. So they used this basis on the first edition because they had these things here, which could be yeah, removed this, uh, on the other side. Uh, and they were random for each of the types also. So in order to not identify what mo monster abilities are under by looking at the plastic, uh, you could shuffle around, so using different monsters and different tokens. I really didn't like it then, and I really like it less now, because no, now all the uh, tokens under are identical. And yeah, it's just a mess, because the figures fall off very easy and it takes a lot of time just to assemble it every time, so I glue them now permanently, so it's it's better, but uh, I still don't like the solution. But uh, I understand why they did it, but not for the second edition. So it doesn't just say place a figure there, no, you get a narration that tells you what's actually going on. Ah, great thing. Well, I spent two actions with each of the investigators, so now I leave it over to the app, the mythos phase now. So I'll just click the button on the lower right here, and we end the investigator phase. So now the app can take vengeance. Yeah, and now we are not in control anymore. The app can just throw things at us and make us, give us damage, give us horrors, 
give us traumas uh, in the game, of course, uh, maybe, uh, and make the monsters attack and other things. So now we are just, yeah, we are screwed now. <laughs> no, not, not really. The app also gives us more story, and uh, sometimes uh, we will we will be aided by the story and something not. It totally depends on the scenario and random things uh, chosen by the app. So now. The druid has said to move two spaces to be within as many investigators as possible, and it will attack everyone. <gasps> okay, the monster attacks. Again, we are told what is going to happen. It just doesn't. It just doesn't just say roll dice. So uh, I'm going to do so anyway. So I have an agility test. I'm going to use uh, take a gatha first and three blanks. So if you pass, no. If you fail, the horrible fangs. Oh no. Uh, so, they told me to flip th damage face up. I currently don't have any damage, but I will get three new and they will be put face down according to the app. But if I had damage from before, I had to flip of, uh, two of them face up. So I flip one of them face up and it says no additional fa effect face down again and the next one. So, fortunate for me. And then Mandy Thompson rolls and she gets two successes. Hooray! Now, uh, on the character sheets you have health and you have sanity. If you get as much damage or horror as your health or sanity, you will either die and be eliminated from the game and uh, make it game over actually for everybody, or you can go insane. And if you go insane, you don't die from the game, no, you just go insane. You get one of these cards here. And these are the only cards you do not share with your friends you're playing with. No, no. Hey, you know, this is a cooperative game, but not always. If you go insane, you get one of these cards. And many of these cards are different. And someone gives you uh, some horrible things to do to win the game. So let's say the crew wins the game. But if you didn't steal something from the other players maybe, you didn't win. You were the only one that lost. That's not good. And sometimes you can even win if the others fail to win. So you will try to sabotage the mission. And you're not allowed to speak of these. <laughs> Interesting. So lastly now, I'm just gonna attack the monster back just to see how that works. So I'm gonna use uh, Agatha here. And she has a revolver and she has a spell. So let's make it interesting. Let's try to spell and see what happens. So I click down here on the monsters and click on Druid. I click on attack. And here are a list of all the weapons you can attack it with. From heavy weapon, bladed weapon, firearm, spell, or even unarmed. And each of these cause an action as you see. So, spell. So again, everything is thematic. Uh, the text will happen now will tell you what happens based on the weapon and the monster you fight. Now, the first edition had this as well, but not the app. You had uh, three decks of cards, and uh, each of these decks uh, had uh, re reference to each type of monster, being humanoid or something. And uh, you flip to the cards until you find uh, a matching weapon. So sometimes you have flipped through many cards in the deck to find the correct one. But when you did, you had a text that narrates the uh, event and made it very interesting. And it was thematic as well with what happened uh, based on what weapon you had and the monster you have. So the same now, you get the narration and you, you see what happened. But of course I have to just test agility and none of my uh, investigators have great agility. But in this case it's Agatha, so let's repeat. Hey, I got two. Success. So, I read the, the hand here. If you pass, the hand suddenly frees in place with a jolt of black magic, or deck black lightning. And you deal damage equal to the card here. So, three. So, oh, I did this already. So, on the left here, under the portrait, you see zero. So, I can do one, two, three. So, that's uh, the number now. I can also go up to five, and the app will say, did you, are you sure you killed the uh, enemy? No, of course not. But he has three now. And that's an attack. So it says, also said in the text, flip this card, the spell. And in this case, the spell works exactly as I expect, aside from all the blood. No additional effect. Then we discard this shriveling and gain a new one. So the next time I use this spell, something different might happen. Well, you could try and play it on this tiny screen here. Look at it. Oh, you have to squint with your eyes just to look at it. So I'm not gonna play with my phone, no way. Maybe iPhone 5 or 6 is, uh, six or 7 is better, you know, the plus size. But I use the iPad because you need a large screen for all the text. There's a lot of text in this game. 
But there you have it again, uh, the iPad. Uh, you use a lot, spend a lot of time in this game watching the app. Uh, everything you do in this game, you uh, check a token, you click the app. What happens? You open the door, you click the app. What happens? You meet a monster, you click the app. What happens? You attack the monster, you click. You, know, you, you see the pattern here? Yeah, you, you check the app for a lot of things. Uh, so you spend a big portion of your time to look at the app. Now, there are two ways to, to approach this. Uh, the one I like to do is uh, I just use the app myself and I read aloud what happens. So, because the other way it uh, would be to send the app uh, to the player who is active. But that would just make it a pass and play game. So I don't want that. I want to be engaged in the board with the other players. So I will just take the app and I will read, a, read what happens so everybody can listen in and uh, decide based on what I say on the app. And yeah, uh, that's why I like it because I, I noticed that they really want to be engaged in the story and the story in this game is great. It's typical HP Lovecraft story with uh, uh, independent stories. They have no, there's no campaign in here. Uh, so you do one scenario and you have one story and do another, another scenario and totally different story. But it, it works, it really works. And you have to find out what is going on here, how can you uh, solve the mystery and how can you escape alive. Uh, usually it, or, those stories are really hard to explain because yeah, you just have to experience it uh, mostly. But uh, so even though I feel the app takes too much focus from the game, I still like the narration here. So in this game, I, th I think it's really simple to get some role players to try out this game because this is a role playing game with a board and very simple rules. So you cannot do whatever you want. You have to do what is confined within the borders of the game. Uh, but you still get the narration, you get the choices and you will be told what happens like a, a game master. So. It's very nice for role players to be maybe introduced to board games, but also for board gamers to be introduced to role playing games because you get a story here. And uh, story in games is very fun for me. So, for instance, uh, Pandemic Legacy has a, has a campaign with a story in it, and the story really brings the game, bring the game to life. And Time Stories, what's well, in the title, Stories, uh, it is basically a story with a puzzle element in it. and. Yeah, I love having this story element in the game and the app really tells the story where very well. Everything is nicely written and the narrator, the voice for the intro and the outro is very nice as well. So everything here is done. Yeah, it's just excellent. But I do feel I miss being the keeper. Uh, in the first edition, you had one player play, playing the keeper against the four investigators. Now you have five investigators that can play totally cooperative. Uh, the, this game has hit, uh, I've been playing the second edition a lot more than the first edition already. And I've had the first edition for years now. <laughs> you know why? The first edition has a setup time of at least 30 minutes. And I'm not joking here, no. In the old one, you had to have the keeper, he had to be separated from the investigators, he had to choose, uh, make some choices and get the tokens and get the cards and he had to put them in the correct order. And while he was doing that, the investigator would set up the entire map, so everything was known by in, the, in the layout. And they would choose characters and they would read the intro and then they will meet and you have to place out the cards as the keeper in the correct spaces, in the correct order, because if you mess up, you might make the game unsolvable. So let's say that there's a door, it's locked. Okay, find the key. Well, the key is behind the door. door. Oh, and usually you won't notice this until you've played too long because the cards are face down here and you think you've done everything correctly. And yeah, so, I loved the first edition of the game, especially playing the Keeper, but I loathed the setup time, so I rarely brought it with me, I rarely mentioned it, should we play this game? Uh, because I really didn't like the setup time, it's, it's a pain. So this game has about 5 minutes setup time, you take out the components, you just organize it, pick a character and you're ready to go. Just follow the app instructions and hooray! Uh, so, as long as I have, I don't know, three hours or so, I will play this uh, game here. It's very fun, but the scenarios are very, very long as well. But there you have the power of narration and storytelling. Uh, the game, uh, one of the scenarios takes 240 minutes easily. 
And it's not a joke, it actually says on the app, and yeah, you better believe it. But everything that has been told in the game, it brings all the players, they make it immersed, uh, they get immersed into the game and gameplay, and you just totally forget that time is actually passing. So suddenly it's uh, way past midnight, and wow, we played that long? Wow, that's, that is a good thing, yeah. But th that is my thoughts on uh, Manage of Madness. I, I'm kind of on the fence of whether I like it or not. Well, I do like it, of course, but do I like it enough that I can recommend it to everybody? No, no I don't think so. It has to be a certain group. If you love uh, Lovecraft, of course, and there's no problem there, but you know, it's just the focus on the app. And if you don't have an, a large screen, I wouldn't recommend it either. And of course, you have to have power on the screen, yeah. So many things. I'm not sure if I like the direction that things are going at the moment, but for this uh, game, it works because it brings RPG to get to tabletop uh, and the other way around. So I like that, and it's a fun experience. It is. I just uh, I want to see more content, of course. I, I haven't finished the content here, and having that as an app is very nice as well. You can just download more scenarios, and you don't have to purchase anything, anything physical for now. I had to buy something physical to get two scenarios here. You know, the the first edition and the the. Uh, the Call of the Wild uh, expansion, those are physical expansions, but uh, ah, never mind. They'll probably get some more DLCs later. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again. Bye. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.